The ancient son of one. <clears throat> o Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves now for these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet King Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. You will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, After murdering, do you also take possession? For this the Lord says, In the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, the dog shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered. Because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight, I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or free man, in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel too, the Lord declared, the dog shall devour Jezebel in the city of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. As we heard in our reading, the first reading from the Book of Kings, Jezebel did the dirty work for the king. He was kind of whining and said, Oh, this guy next door won't give me the property. And Jezebel says, I'll do it. And she takes him out. A nice hit. He's gone. Take the property. Well, today we have the encounter that God's saying to Ahab, the king of Israel, you cannot hide from me. You cannot do such an atrocious, evil deed and think you're going to get away with it. You're not just going to walk down the road whistling, because those days of evil are over. Destruction's going to come to you, to your family, to this house, to this kingdom. It wasn't the only sin that he committed. There were other sins. And it just reached the point where God says, enough's enough. And I think that's a question that we ask. Where's that line for God? There's a lot of atrocities today, and there have been over the centuries, tremendous evil. But what's interesting is at the very end is that Ahab heard these words and he tore his garments. I put sackcloth on over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in sackcloth. He went about subdued, a sign of repentance that he really changed. And the Lord says to Elijah, the prophet who he sent to wake him up, he says, have you seen Ahab lately? He's really humbled himself before me. He's not doing it for anyone else. He's doing this before God. He humbled himself before God. And you can never go wrong when you humble yourself before God. Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil 
in his time. But God will bring it later. And that's a whole other homily, a whole <clears throat> discussion about generational sin. That how it perpetuates and how the sin of our parents and in, in the generations before us, what it brings upon us. But I like to truly believe that the grace of God, as we begin new life, each one of us in baptism, that we're given that shot, that we're, our, the record is cleansed. That we don't have to care, carry the sins of our parents, parents for generation to generation, but there seems to be some indication that the evil will come later. And, but my thought is, I'm sure that if the people repented, then the evil would not come upon them. And lastly, the great commandment of God to love. But today is to love your enemies. It's easy to love those who love you, those who think you're the greatest, that you're amazing. You think, yeah, I know you are too. And you just have this love fest. But the person who doesn't like you, who can't stand you, who says, don't call me ever again, don't write to me, don't drive by my house, you make me sick, you think, God, I don't know how to love that person. And God says, well, try. Because your heart will turn. Your heart will turn to darkness, to evil, because of one person. So strive to love, especially your enemies. It's easy to love everyone else, but the ones that are on our path, that are seemingly impossible to love, and that's what love is. It's more than just a human emotion. It's divine, and that's the only way we can do it. To say that, that God helps me to love when I can't love. Please stand. Let us now lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father who knows all of our needs. Let's pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the needs of the church, the needs throughout the world of those who are trying in difficult situations to preach the gospel message, we pray to the Lord. The Lord be our we pray for all civil leaders that the Spirit of God be upon them, assisting them in their work, helping them to see the dignity of the human person in all its stages, to have a love for them, to care for them, we pray to the Lord. The Lord. We pray for those who bear a heavy burden in life, for those who are struggling this day with sickness, with unemployment, with mental illness, whatever it may be, that God will lift them and to strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is our we pray for our beloved dead, in particular for Suplicha Yuang, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that you hold in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Merciful and loving Father, help us to love like you love. Give us the grace to strength, to love our enemies. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty and dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, <coughs> holy, holy Lord, our host, and full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come to me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And <coughs> to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. But I say the Lord, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, be with you for eternal life.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, peace glorifying the Lord by your life. In the back of your missile, you can find the very back page inside. Oh.